hey everyone welcome back to my channel so in in this video we will learn how http3 works and what was the problem with http 1.1 and http2 the previous versions of http so i have written an article a few months back i'll be using that article as a reference for this video so let's consider this scenario your browser is requesting a particular web server for an index.html file so this is a typical uh, you know response http response format it has a header part then followed by a body part so the body part will usually be longer because it contains the you know the entire body of the requested file so in the case of an html file it it, it just copies all the content from the html, HTML file to make so you keep in mind that http is a plain text uh you know protocol so let's look at how http 1.1 responses were sent through tcp the, the client opens a tcp connection with the web server and requests for the index.html file the server then construct the tcp packets for the http response given in figure one and sends them to the browser so this was a figure one so this is the http response format that we need to transport to the client so let's see how the tcp packets are created to transport that http response so let's say we need you know two packets to transport that entire uh, response so we have packet one and packet two so tcp packet will have some headers to identify the sequence number the the destination and the source port you know all those kinds of things and the tcp packet body will just have you know the parts of the original http response so on the first packet it might copy you know the uh, header part if it fits in a particular in a in, a, in an in individual tcp packet so this portion is transported in the first packet and on the second packet it will transport you know few bytes of i mean few portion of the body since in this case the body is very small so maybe we will be able to transport the entire body in the second tcp packet so now you understood right so we have two tcp packets packet number one packet number two by combining the packet one and two the the destination can construct the original html file index.html file but there is a problem a website will have other files like style sheets and images not just an index.html file since we have opened only one tcp connection between the client and server it can transport only one file at a time and per tcp connection so once the index.html file packets have been transported that tcp connection is closed and another connection is open to transfer the next file all right so here is the problem so what what if this particular index.html file had you know other dependencies like a javascript file or a style sheet but the client has opened only one connection i mean the browser has opened only one tcp connection with the server so at a time it can transport only one file because if you look at the the the, the structure of the packet the tcp packet doesn't know what which file is being transported but the client knows because the client requested for index.html file so until all the packets have been received it knows that okay now i am getting the packets for the requested index.html file we we won't be able to send any other file uh, during this period of time because then it will corrupt the response right so once all the packets have been received for the index.html file then the client can send another request saying that okay i have received the index.html file now what i need is the style.css file then again the server will you know fetch the style.css file construct these http packets and start sending them in order so once all the packets for the style.css file is received then again the client can request for another file for example logo.png so it's it 
it will take a while for transporting all the required files to the client side and then only the browser can render that index.html file so this is the problem well um so the browsers typically open six tcp connections per origin and thus it can transport six files in parallel without waiting so this is a hack implemented by the browser so if you look at the network tab of the the browsers you can see that it always opens at most six tcp connections to the destination server for example if you are requesting uh a web page from google.com you can see that six connections are being opened to the same destination server so what happens here so they can transport six files in parallel without having to wait for one you know file to be completed to start transferring the next file so if your index.html have uh, two other dependencies one is the style.css and then one is logo.png you can transport all these three files in parallel because the browser has six TCP connections opened, uh, you know, with the destination server. Even if a connection is reused, uh, in the case of a uh, TCP, you know, keep alive feature, still the files can arrive only after w one after another. It it cannot multiplex files through a you know, single TCP connection. That cannot be done because there is no way for the client to identify which file is being transported so the only thing the client know that i have initiated a request for this particular file so all the upcoming tcp packets will carry you know chunks of this originally requested file so one large or slow file can slow down all the files transported in the same connection this is the problem now let's look at uh, you know http2 the inability to transport multiple files simultaneously in a single tcp connection was the main drawback of http 1.1 it is simply a waste of resources and network capacity well http 2.0 that problem was solved by using the concept of multiple streams inside a single tcp packet the problem was the inability to multiplex files within a single tcp connection http2 they introduced the concept of multiplexing streams of data within a single tcp packet so let's say we have to transport two files to render our website one is index.html and another file style.css so we have two files now one is the original index.html file then style.css so instead of sending one file per tcp packet we can now send pieces of more than one file per packet to look at this tcp packet so this is the number one packet but still we are transporting two files inside this packet index.html file and you know few bytes from the style.css file but again the tcp is unaware of this particular fact that there are two files being transported for tcp the body is just a block of several bytes nothing else but it's the http2 specification that makes it clear that okay we now we are we have two http headers http 2.0 headers so the first section means we are transporting few bytes from the index.html file then the second section of this tcp packet is transporting few bytes from the style.cs file so the client side on the client side knows that okay we have two files in this packet so we can you know okay this particular few bytes is to be used for constructing the index.html file and this particular section can be used to construct style.cs file so thus it solves a major problem in the networking called the head of line blocking by using multiple binary streams within, within a tcp packet so larger files wouldn't slow down you know other files because we are now multiplexing multiple files within the same connection so if http 2.0 solved the head of line blocking issue then what was the need for another revision 
we solved the head of line blocking problem using streams in HTTP 2.0 but that solved this HOL problem only at the HTTP layer the HOL blocking issue still exists in the TCP layer we will explain if you remember we discussed that TCP packets are always delivered in a sequential order right so the, the assembling of TCP packets is done only after receiving all the packets if one particular packet is missing then the browser i mean then the operating system will keep all the other packets until the you know the the missing packet is received this is a huge bottleneck for our http communication let's say we are using http 2.0 streams to transport two files index.html and banner.jpg two files assume that five tcp packets are needed to transport them completely okay so with the successful transport of packets one two four and five the index.html might have been transferred completely so let's consider this scenario we have packets one two four and five and by transporting all these packets we received the index.html completely but the missing packet the third packet is required to complete the you know banner.jpg file so that that's missing the problem here is that the tcp will wait for the third packet to be retransmitted uh, before assembling you know all these requests and passing the data to the browser so the problem here is that it could have already rendered the index.html file to the user and then after it receives the third missing packet it can render banner.jpg but in this case due to the tcp's head of line blocking problem the rendering of both index.html and banner.jpg is, is being delayed so that that is the main problem so tcp is a problem here tcp's sequential delivery is the problem here sequential delivery and the ACK mechanism the acknowledgement mechanism is the problem here so the decision was to move to UDP but UDP is unreliable because of the way it is designed it won't guarantee the delivery of packets there is no guarantee of order delivery and it won't retransmit them in, in case of one packet goes missing so that's why you know they decided to use UDP instead of TCP because for UDP it's just a datagrams being transferred without any acknowledgement without any you know ordering it, it don't care about the delivery it just transmit the packets the datagrams and and that's it that's why a new protocol was designed on top of udp that's called the quick quick protocol that means quick udp internet connections so with quick streams are supported at the transport layer itself and therefore no need for http to implement them remember tcp had no information about the multiple streams being transported because all it sees is a large block of byte nothing else so if you go back to the http2 we we discussed that it has the concept of streams so the http specification understands that there are two files being transported but if you look from the perspective of the tcp protocol it, it it all it sees is just a block of you know several bytes it, it, it doesn't know that we are transporting two files and the the protocol is http 2.0 and all it's just um you know few blocks of bytes in the tcp body that's it but in the case of quick it knows that multiple streams are being transported in a packet and they need to be treated independently so the transport layer itself is aware of the multiple streams being transported within the udp packet so there can be two streams stream one and stream two just like what we you know saw in the http2 example so Qt knows that it is transporting two streams and that they need to be treated independently that is the most important difference between the quick and http 2.0 so 
So unlike in TCP, Quick retains ordering within a stream and not across the packet. So this this line is very important. This was the major drawback or limitation of HTTP 2 that you know, used TCP to transport the files. What we needed was we need we need a TCP to be, to be aware of the two files being transported and if it if the tcp know that we had completed the delivery of the second stream that that is uh, index.html and one packet was missing for banner.jpg if tcp had the knowledge of you know those multiplex streams within this, within that package then it could have handed over the you know the the completed index.html file to the browser and it could have started rendering that file but unfortunately tcp was not designed for that purpose so that was a primary goal to avoid the tcp head of line blocking issue in transporting the website data so i hope you you have understood uh, this problem with the, the head of line blocking problem that existed in http1 and partially solved in HTTP 2 but in, in the case of HTTP 3 the, the HOL problem never exists even on the transport layer itself so let's look at the current state of HTTP 3 so the HTTP 3 is a proposed standard by the Internet Engineering Task Force and it's, it's being, being widely adopted HTTP 3 by default makes TLS mandatory HTTP 3 can be incredibly faster along with zero RTT that means zero round trip time so we will explain that in in another video so currently HTTP 3 it is being used by around 25 percentage of the you know the website traffic supported by all major browsers except Safari at the time of writing this article it, it gives 3.5 times better performance to load single page applications compared to HTTP 1.1 because now you know it can simply transport multiple files in a single connection however the availability of client libraries are still a challenge for developers I have tried to compile the list of few libraries here so I hope now you have understood the concepts of HTTP 3 and how the quick protocol solves the problem as it existed in the tcp protocol uh, we didn't get into the details of the quick and uh, you know the http3 maybe we can do that in another video so if you have any questions you can ask in comments and i will try to reply to your questions and also if you like this video please consider subscribing to my channel thank you